Okay, so let's evaluate the lemma of the Riemann zeta function. We're sort of treating it as a real valued function here. This is a nice exercise in real analysis. And if you wanted to have a go at this lemma in the complex way, it's much more complicated. There's a few different ways that you could actually define the limit and evaluate it. But this is a nice little exercise here. So we define the Riemann zeta function at s as this sum of 1 over n to the s. And here s has to be greater than 1 in order for this to converge. We're just saying that s is a real number. So to start off with the limit, I'm going to just show a little upper bound here on the function. So this is actually the upper bound you get from the integral test. So if you imagine you've got some sort of function f of x, which is non-increasing, it's decreasing. When you have a look at this, at all the integer values. So if you look at the area of these rectangles here, what have we got? Well, so here we've got this is f of 2 is the height of this and the width is 1. So the area of this is just f of 2. The area of the next one is f of 3. And the area of the next one is f of 4, and so on. So from this sort of proof by picture, you can see that the sum from n equals 2 to infinity of f of n, as long as it's a non-increasing function, this is less than this integral here from 1 to infinity of the function less than or equal to this. You can see there's always this little bit of area on top left out. And this is particularly relevant here because all you need to do now to turn this into a sum from n equals 1 to infinity is just add f of 1 to both sides of this inequality. So you get that this is less than or equal to f of 1 plus the integral from 1 to infinity f of x dx. So this is your upper bound from the integral test. And now we're going to apply this to the Riemann zeta function so what is our f of n here? Well, f of n, this is 1 over n to the power of s, just for any value of s greater than 1. So what does this give us when we apply this bound? This tells us then that zeta of s, this is equal to the sum from n equals 1 to infinity, 1 over n to the s. But this has to be less than or equal to f of 1, so 1 over 1 to the s, so that's just equal to 1 plus this integral from 1 to infinity, 1 over x to the s, integrating with respect to x here. So this is nice because we can evaluate this integral really easily. So this is equal to 1 plus, and you'll get x to the power of 1 minus s over 1 minus s, evaluating this at infinity and 1. So as x goes to infinity, this term will converge to 0, and you can see that just because s is greater than 1, so this is a negative power. So you don't get a contribution at infinity, and then when x is 1, it turns out that you'll just get 1 over s minus 1 as your contribution there from that part of the integral. So what we've shown here is that zeta of s, this is less than or equal to 1 over 1 plus s minus 1. And this is for all s greater than 1. And now we can put this inequality to use because we know that limits preserve weak inequalities. So know that the limit as s tends to infinity of zeta of s, this is less than or equal to the limit as s tends to infinity of 1 plus 1 over s minus 1. And then you can see this term here, 1 over s minus 1, as s goes to infinity, it's just going to converge to 0, so this is equal to 1. So we've shown that the limit, the room zeta function, is less than or equal to 1. And now, to get a lower bound, so zeta of s, you think this is equal to 1 over 1 to the s plus 1 over 2 to the s plus 1 over 3 to the s, and so on. We've got a term here, this one's just equal to 1, and everything else here is positive. So you've got 1 plus some positive stuff, so your mean zeta function for sure, for all s, is greater than or equal to 1. And then we can apply this same sort of argument that limits preserve weak inequalities. So you get limit c to s is now greater than or equal to the limit as s goes to infinity of 1, which is just equal to 1. And then we can conclude that we've shown that the limit is greater than or equal to 1. We've also shown that it's less than or equal to 1. And then we can say that the limit 
taking it as a real function, the mean zeta function is equal to 1. 